classes can attend the revision hours fair enough so let's begin and uh, probability so this is as i told you let's go to the breakup of or the weightage of uh, the uh, the topics and you can see statistics and probabilities of 11 marks out of which uh, the majority is uh, a portion to statistics so probability will have maybe 2 3 you know uh, maximum 3 to 4 marks questions usually until last year 4 marks questions 2 plus 2 used to come or many a times 1 1 2 1 a 2 into 1 and 1 into 2 that means 2 1 marker and 1 2 marker question used to come but yeah so uh, yeah so you can't expect more than 4 marks any which way from probability okay so there is no deletion so whatever was there it's still there uh, though in in our regular classes we did discuss about something called geometrical probability which is not there anyways in cbse board so you are you know kind of good here so no deletion again same breakup so this has been now done so many times you must have by heart it so let me not waste time in this anymore let's go directly to the content material right so uh, what is probability it is a concept so we are basically intending to measure chances right so what are the chances of certain events to happen we had certain basic definitions related to experiments trials and all that you have studied uh, probability in grade 9 as well can anyone tell me what's the basic difference between whatever you studied in 9th and what is there in grade 10 what's the basic difference in 9th also you studied the same thing you did apply the same type of formula but what is the basic difference between the two anyone has any clue why did we do the same thing in grade 9 and why are we repeating it we do for grouped data okay and and here we don't do for grouped data um so what's what's the basic difference yes anish your observation is correct bache but you know the explanation again uh, as in in terms of uh, the reasoning still needs to be little fine tuned so uh, we did probability in grade 9 all of you did probability in grade 9 yes or no do you did or not In nine, we do actual experiment. In ten, we just theoretical probability. Okay, good. Arian Tendal. So hence, uh, Arian is explaining. Now you are closer to whatever I was expecting. So basically, probability is dealt in two approaches, right? So in ninth grade, you did some did something called empirical probability. Empirical, isn't it? So what is empirical? So based out of results of experiments actually performed. Empirical, sorry, empirical. So it's not E X. It's E M. P E R I empirical M P empirical ha huh? empirical probability right M no empirical spelling sim R in single E M P E R I C A L empirical is it this is am I not right? right or wrong what is the spelling of this thing empirical okay so anyways whatever is the spelling <clears throat> check it now uh, is it empirical so you you just let me know is it m p a e m p i or e m p e whatever the meaning is this what is this this is based on experiments right so check the experiment uh, experiments that is you perform actual experiments so when you say you toss a coin you actually toss a coin and uh, you you know toss a coin n number of times right certain number of times that's like uh, by you know you do actual experiment you observe tabulate it and then find the probability what is different in 10th grade is you do not do any experiment you basically try your knowledge so theoretical probability so in your grade 10 probability very weak at spellings okay anyways so what you do google okay chalo theek hai so empirical Ch change it empirical empire same empirical hai na chaliye it's okay so the difference is understood what is the difference between the two so hence in the ninth grade you would have seen tables made what arin was no sorry what anish was mentioning so you would see grouped data or any type of data basically so let's say uh, head and tail if you're tossing a coin they will give you let's say out of 1000 times this was 490 and this was 510 something like that okay and then you were asked to find out the probability so you used to do what number of times the favorable outcome let's say head in this case comes divided by total number of observation you recall this in the grade 9 you did this right so there was no theory involved in the in terms of you know what theory in the sense can we do away with this experiment and still try to find out the probability of 
getting a particular outcome. So that's what we do in grade nine. So grade nine may sorry grade ten. So in grade ten empirical based on experiment in grade sorry in grade nine based on experiments in grade ten based on theoretical calculations. And for that matter, we did learn something about permutation and combination to facilitate learning of theoretical probability. I hope you remember those things. Okay. Now, what is an experiment? It's an operation which can produce some well-defined outcomes. Now, this is very important. You cannot have vague, vague or fuzzy outcomes. It has to be well-defined. So you cannot have you cannot have something between head and tail. So if you toss a coin, it has to be either head or tail. You cannot have something landing perfect, you know, perpendicularly on the ground. Nothing. That does that doesn't happen. So well-defined. So you know. If you roll a die, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. No five point five. No quarter to five. No root five. Nothing. One, two, three, four, five. Well defined, right? If root five is also a well defined outcome, then that's also there. But in this case, rolling a die, we know only one, two, three, four, five. And in no case, the uh, the the die is going to be like this. So this is the yeah. So this is improbable, not happening. Okay. So hence, this is not you know. Uh, so clear cut definition of outcome must be there. Random experiment, an experiment in which all possible outcomes are known and the exact outcome cannot be predicted in advance is called a random experiment. So again, tossing a coin, drawing a card from a pack of cards or rolling a die, all are random experiments because one, we know the set of outputs, set of outputs already know. There cannot be any seven, there cannot be any minus 1.5, there cannot be any 6.7. In rolling a die, set of output is known and there is fixed cardinality. Fixed cardinality means the set. The set will have fixed number of the number of elements on that set of output is fixed. Here, if you draw that set, it will be one, comma two, comma three, comma four, comma five, comma six, and no more. So we know there are six outputs, but we are also knowing that there is no one particular number which is favorable. Okay, unlike in case of Mahabharata, have you seen Mahabharata, where there was a fraud, some scam was going on. Yep, what was that fraud? So Mama Shakuni is a very dangerous guy. Now he has schemed and uh, uh, something he did, and he made the 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 dice which were there that those were biased, and he used to know what is the outcome before he used to throw the dice. Yes, die tampering, right? Like what? Cricket ball tampering used, you know. So the, those are wrong things to do. Don't do it. So set of output is known, not known. Uh, sorry, a set of output is known rather, but exact output is not known. So what is going to be going to be there? We don't know. It could be anything. So all we say, all are all outcomes are equally probable. Equally probable, probable, right? What is not equally probable? For example. Uh, uh, no, Virat Kohli hitting a century is more probable. Well, let's now take, talk in terms of relative, you know. But Virat Kohli taking a wicket is kind of lesser probable because anyways he doesn't bowl. So you know now now no equal probable and lesser probable, you know. So outcome is so in this case all are equal probable. So you cannot say that hey one has more frequency to be, you know, to be to come as an output or five has more frequency to come as an output. No, so all are. You know, until unless there is some bias, you know, deliberately put inside. So hence, we are considering only those experiments which are random in nature. We don't know whether which output is going to come, but extent of output is known. Okay, what's an event? Now, as definition, the collection of all or some of the possible outcome is called an event. So let's say when you again roll a die. Uh, yeah, when a, when you roll a die. Then, guys, can you just give me one second? I think there is some somebody who's disturbed, who's not able to do anything. Just a minute. I will just come back. Yeah, sorry. So it's done. Okay. Now, what I was saying is, yes. So when you get a prime number, when you roll a die, what are prime numbers will you get when you roll a die? How many prime numbers do you get when you roll a die? Well, getting a prime number on the die, right? So well, what, how many prime numbers are there? All right, come on, what happened? Guys, are you able to, oh, am I on mute or oh, no? Yes, so well, well, tell me three. So two, three, five, correct? 
so that's an event right so event is just like an event of um, let's say um, what, what is this guy's new joe biden right so joe biden second is when it is equally likely unequally likely event oh my god <laughs> equally likely events are very very clear what are unequal what is unequally likely unequally likely event kya hota hai unequally likely event wo hota hai ki there are you know one one particular bias for example um you know first of all let's talk about equally likely event equally likely event is um let's say you have thousands of cards and in each card you have mentioned uh, or let's say uh, let me let me rephrase let's say no no i i'm 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 giving you another example let's say uh, you you take 100 cards okay 700 cards and each in each 100 of all uh, let's say one in one set of 100 you write sunday in the next 100 you write monday in the next 100 you write tuesday and likewise all days you write and mix them up randomly so that you do not know i don't know whether you used to do in the childhood let's say when you used to play cricket we used to write names in the chits okay and to divide the teams have you done that in your life ever when or let's say instead of playing cricket just let's say any team formation and you have to select teams then what you used to do is you used to write the names of each of the player in a small piece of paper we used to make sure that the papers are also of the equal dimension you do this in secret santa and all that stuff when you play at school in school and all that have you have you done that where you write the name of uh, uh, your your friends and all that and then and you what do you do you try to make sure that the dimensions are all equal so that you in any case you do not figure out who's or any let's say odd man out in that uh, lot so that's where you know you mix and all are equally likely then then you you know blindfold some person and ask ask him or her to pick a particular chit or pick a chit rather so he doesn't know or she doesn't know what he or she is going to get that's called equally likely so all she can got get any of them any of the any of the chits that's equally likely are in my clear but there could be cases where let's say uh uh sorry stress what are you saying now yes now let's say there in the same example if in, in I, i do this i do this uh two chits with same name yeah that could be or rather let's say you know uh, the next level ho gaya in the first step, step itself what i do is i change the paper quality of one particular person or couple of you know or let's say i have some favorable uh, people to be chosen then what i do is i write their name in different quality paper let's say one in um uh, a newspaper and another one in, let's say in your um a4 sheet right so by texture it's different okay and you blindfold the person now you have changed the likelihood of um uh, selection of a particular chit do you get the point are another another is uh, you know uh, are you are you getting this example uh, the person who asked i think who, who asked arin so you are now saying that uh, you know um uh, uh not everything is and uh, and that also in that experiment also you change the number so let's say only two with newspaper and uh, the other one with let's say another eight out of 10 in different texture paper so are all 10 equally likely now do you understand what i'm trying to say i don't know so one once again so let's say you have two names written question of the probability of basketball thrown into basket is it equally or not equally likely what question in ncert there is a question of the probability of basketball thrown into basket is that equally what is the question what is the event or what is the experiment you are doing throwing a basket onto a basketball is that is that is that it is that what you are saying yes so the basket you know so throwing a ball in the basket the outcomes are either it will go in or it will not go in is it so hence in this case there is a 50 50% chance 50 50% chance no it will go or not go but the thing is again if let's say uh, uh, this is geometric probability uh, again depends again on the context actually so let's say if the basket is here and you are throwing in this side then obviously there is zero probability that it will go 
okay there is not right and let's say if you are this is the basket here and you are throwing up then obviously zero probability but you are making sure that the person who is throwing is throwing with the intent of as in you know it is going in this direction only yeah so hence yes to an extent geometric probability if they are so considering that the ball thrown at the right angle with the right velocity will land there it becomes a very difficult thing to exactly predict the probability here but for the sake of argument that you know okay everything is fine it was going there so hence you know they, it, it it could land up in you know uh, whether in or out but let's say again this is where the gap is yes exactly that does it hence the, I'm, i'm saying see why is probability crawled ek minute let, let me let me let me let me probab no no hold on hold on probability and uh, probability is in the world of indeterminate world right so it's as good as saying will it be what is the probability of raining today what is the what is the probability of raining today can you predict that in next hour there will not be any rain at least we cannot predict the imd can definitely predict but again that is a probability but all all that probability this indeterminate case is dependent on so many factors the moment we know the factors it becomes a determinate case is that understood okay for example you can also predict the let's say if i give you the weight of the coin you can try this dekho i give you the weight of the coin i give you the air resistance you know information i give you the amount of force which the toss the person who is tossing applied on that coin so it becomes a mechanic mechanics ka problem right on also on what what face it will land so to that an extent if i have all the information i will be able to predict on what you know so hence the amount of force will guide it to how many turns it will go while it is going up then if let's say you remove the air resistance then what happens it will take the same route back and then land on this particular face is it so hence if we have the knowledge of factors the probability becomes determined or deterministic value so hence we say probability only where and hence it is between 0 and 1 so 1 is happening 0 is not happening and everything else is a matter of chance because in between 0 and 1 there are lots of factors acting which i do not know the moment i know i know 1 i know i can predict what is going to happen so that's the so wherever there is a knowledge gap wherever we cannot explain stuff because there is a lot of you know other factors involved in and it is beyond our capabilities to analyze everything for example monsoon prediction it's all on on chances the pro probability but there was a time when we did not have any factor at hand someone used to just look at the horizon and then he used to predict whether there will be a rain or not today we have pressure data temperature data wind speed data pressure on the ocean data and xyz thousands of data is there we collect it and we'll try to make sense out of it and then also we are not 100% sure because there are few more things which we still need to discover so till that happens it is probabilistic in nature so hence in this case you know if you throw a basketball it depends on so many parameters to you know uh, but still it is a probabilistic question it's not that you cannot uh, you know uh, so let's say if i if i say that i throw in exactly 180 degrees what is the probability of the ball, the ball landing on the basket so let's say if i am throwing exactly opposite direction will it land what is the probability of it landing in the on the on the or in the basket zero right now you can counter argue you can counter argue no sir he has thrown in such a way that it takes full circle and then lands here right you can right so hence you throw it in such a way in the opposite direction that it goes into orbit and comes back and then lands in the basket now this can all are extremely improbable thing right so hence we talk in terms of something between 0 and 1 okay fair enough so i hope this is clear now so these are the common things common experiments which you will be do as I, which is has been discussed there is no other gyan here because their pnc has not been taught to you so hence we cannot go beyond a realm of simplistic counting numbers so hence tossing a coin you know uh, two outcomes head and tail and mutually exclusive how what are what are mutually exclusive events this is what is this mutually exclusive what does it mean so in board exam either you are going to pass or fail god god forbid that you fail that 
but uh, you know either or or yes not mutually exclusive for head if head is there the other will not happen okay so if one has happened the other will not occur right so if one let's say on tossing you have got head there will not be any case we will not get head uh, or sorry uh, you know if head has happened then head has happened right or uh, what i'm trying to say is uh, you cannot have head and tail together in the same one top one co uh, coin toss so both the results cannot happen together but there could be some exclusive mutually non exclusive events also not mutually exclusive event can you give me an example where there is a there are events which are not mutually ex exclusive so both the events can happen together maybe yeah so any any idea any example where there are two events which are happening together so there's an experiment going on outcomes are coming out and uh, the outcomes are such that uh, the two events are happening together any example anyone bolo dosto tell tell any case where you see that oh yahan pe to sun during rain need understand any case when you are experiment with two coins okay aryan go ahead so yes when i experiment with two coins what are the events you are talking about so which two events are mutually not exclusive or not mutually exclusive you have to define an event ach i'll give you an example so for example i roll a uh, die okay so i say that our event is um, what is the event event is to let's say e1 e1 is a uh, event of getting a prime number right i roll a die and i say that event is i must get a prime number e2 is event of getting an even number okay now tell me are these two events exclusive both of them cannot happen together or both of them can happen together also can even e2 happen together or you when yes can happen what is that case what is that case two very good so hence if let's say if i roll a die i get two on top face then this has happened yes tick mark prime number and is this even number yes tick mark prime number right so hence in this case you will see there is an overlap yeah so overlap so both of them are so hence we say that e1 and e2 are not mutually exclusive so when e1 is happening you cannot say you yes uh, picking a diamond and an even number yes so you cannot say yes very good that's an example so you can you can pick a diamond or an even number or both both are possible right there is an intersection in terms of set theory so rnr people you know that you know this is one set another set there is some intersection right so these are the out outcomes of event 1 so let's say in this case uh, how can i represent in case of a venn diagram so let's say even numbers are uh, 4 6 2 and this is 3 and 5 so this is the outcome of e1 and these are the outcomes of e2 and then we have an intersection here in terms of 2 okay so is this related to an event being subset of another event uh event cannot be subset subset again don't use the term subset here because the moment you say set then you have to have a collection of events right so event or singleton set of one event you can you can say but let, let's not use the term subset here okay so event is not a subset event is a different entity subset is a different different entity uh, entity set of events itself is a set understood so event cannot be subset set of events can be there okay okay now rolling a die you know and then card all of you are well familiar with uh, the deck of cards 52 cards we have 13 cards each of four suits what spades clubs hearts and diamonds we many times we say colors also so instead of colors so how many colors are there in two colors are there right black black and red so cards of spades and clubs are black cards and uh, cards of hearts and diamonds are red cards okay kings queens and jacks are known as face cards thus there are in all 12 face cards how many of you play card game here anyone 
poker how many play poker anyone plays plays oh bluff my god okay bluff okay anyone else anyone plays or oh, blackjack and okay blackjack so uno anyone plays uno different card game uno anyone for uno here yeah it's quite fun no i really love uno right uno uno and i every time i forget say, saying uno you have to say uno right before you have you left with you are left with only one card and you have to say uno right but every time i lose i i get penalty because i forget to say that that is so disgusting the, the person who has designed the game i curse him like anything whenever i forget to say uno anyways i enjoy equally when others forget it so <laughs> that's quite fun anyways chalo so good game so you also design a card game good now actually chaliye so now we come to probability mathematics of probability what is it so probability of occurrence of an event is denoted by p brackets e number of outcomes favorable to e so what are number of outcomes favorable outcomes so here is a question mark so favorable what is favorable favorable outcome is something which i expected and it is coming so favorable outcome if i toss a coin i want a head and head actually ha happens then we say that the favorable outcome has taken place okay or total number of possible outcomes and hence we studied a little bit of pnc so that we can calculate without doing actual experiments and that's the difference between the ninth grade probability which you studied which was the table was given number of trials and experiment outcomes were shared with you and you had to calculate the probability can anyone also tell me what's the difference or you know if uh, you have done this uh, tossing of coin in ninth grade as well and in 10th grade as well what was the basic difference apart from the theoretical and experimental point of view what was the difference as in you know uh, can you comment on the values you used to get yeah uh, anyone so in 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 case of ninth grade if you do the same tossing thing uh, you never got 0.5 as a probability of getting head do you remember guys so there was a table let's say uh, it says a head and this is a number of 1000 times you tossed it and you got a number 240 no not 240 for 480 1000 times and tail you you get uh, um, uh, and yes correct and this was let's say 520 correct are in so if you see uh, our uh theoretical probability is better oh uh, no in terms of see theoretical probability and empirical probability are re related to one thing and i don't know what is the criteria for theoretical probability or empirical probability to tend towards theoretical probability so you will see that when does when does that happen so empirical probability is here ep and theoretical probability is here and empirical probability is always in the neighborhood of theoretical probability so let's say theoretical pro yes number of trials correct there is a lot of message in this so you num increase the number of trials you become perfect go closer to the target isn't it a deep message between empirical probability to theoretical probability you have to do multiple number of times to make sure that whatever you are getting observations you are going closer to the reality so hence do many many times repeat your exercises do many sums repeat it so that if you are let's say a pilot fly for more number of hours so you'll get a lot of experience so you'll become perfect 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 right so hence okay so that's what uh, so hence in the empirical probability you will get numbers which are off the target by some error let's say and that error is because you are experimenting and uh, randomness of the uh, experiment hence you'll get an error you will study in the first few topics of 11th grade physics how errors creep in in all these data random errors are the what systematic errors are what and all that stuff so uh, again there we'll talk about probability so see there is a logical connection very good now uh, so you know number of outcomes favorable to e divided by total number of possible outcome is what is but in reality theoretical is an ideal world yes my dear absolutely correct but everybody is chasing an ideal world isn't it you need a corrupt uh, free corruption free prime minister though we ourselves are very corrupt we need uh, you know everything should be good clean everywhere but you know um, inside our mind there is a lot of garbage but anyways let's not go into philosophy uh, yes that's true real world is little not perfect yeah anyways so sure event 
what is sure event now event with probability 1 so something which is going to happen give me an example of sure event folks give me an example of sure event that is going to happen 100% sure india is going to win the world cup next when is the world next world cup cricket world cup 2023 where is that is it uh no uh, sure surety of you know i am saying india winning football world cup in 2022 true 100% probable what is the probability of that happening india winning football world cup in 2022 i think there is a world cup in 2022 if i am not wrong is there a world cup in 2022 football world cup there is right so what is the probability of india winning the football world cup in 2022 zero sidak singh is saying yeah. okay all black balls in a bag probability of picking black ball okay very good nice and um, what else other other things tomorrow is a tuesday somebody said very good any other example getting all of you will fail in grade 10 what is the probability of that happening Ah, uh, very good. God willing, you should. No one should fail. Everyone should get what? What is the target? Come on. Target is centum. Yes, hundred on hundred. Very good. So all of you should get centum. But again, there is a game of probability over there as well. But God willing, my probability of all students getting centum is one. Anyways, impossible event. The probability of an impossible event is zero. Give me an example. Impossible event. Can example do? example unique hona chahiye the example should be unique not that cliched one red ball black ball these ball kuch aur unique impossible event is zero they are uh, getting a joker from are card wards se bahar aao na dost matlab real world forget about uh, sun rises from west uh, okay impossible okay so good anything else corona virus no no case of corona virus in next 10 days Uh, Trump getting impeached for a third time can't be. Ah, correct. Zero possibility. Yes, good. Tree growing upside down. Are you? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Anything else? Are you? Some creativity. Show me. Come on. What is it? Some more creativity. Zero. Absolute zero. Huh? An impossible event is zero. Come on. Think. Think. Put some pressure on your brain. Come up with some. good creative ideas of zero probability come on yaar requesting so much people in this class having creativity uh, that is between zero and one aniket chalo aur bhi batao aur something else something else come on mahatma gandhi coming back ha ah, okay akshita good <laughs> coming back to life there is a mahatma gandhi sitting next to you know your screen okay uh, cheteshwar pujara having a strike rate of a uh, cricket okay yeah okay world ending tomorrow are some positive anirudh you are your name has sai in it so some positive news please ending ending kuch acha creative batao na matlab seeing alien life okay so you know look at the mirror everyone is alien anirudh not being fake news okay that is possible okay uh Oh, seeing alien life is possible is what Aditi is saying. Aditi, you have an experience with alien or what? From Aditya to everyone, be happy. Oh my God, big philosophy. Oh ho oh, oh. ho ho. Dinosaurs coming back. Okay, mm -hmm. zero probability. Bro, don't go that dark. What kind of probability is this, Aniket Mungara? Flunking exams. Okay, Rohit not trying to hit a big shot. Are you cricket way to bahar hoge? So no cricket, nothing. I sort of funny. time travel it's possible it's not zero siddharth meeting doremon oh. <laughs> okay good so only few people are creative rest all are not enjoying probability at all zero probability hmm? zero probability so zero pro iron man coming back to life okay okay or india going back to africa you know it's zero probability <laughs> yeah uh, uh, mount everest converting back to tethys sea zero probability and is obeying the law of conservation of energy uh, actually it happens adit uh, law of conservation of energy is not true in case of relativistic mechanics so mass mass may change ho jata hai energy okay so rahul gandhi earnings <laughs> oh my god political political jokes not allowed sorry 
पोलिटिकल प्रायोरिटी नहीं चाहिए इंडिया में हिट अफ्रीका इन द फार फ्यूचर रीचिंग लाइट स्पीड और लेट्स से इंडियन इंडियन पाकिस्तान रीयूनाइटिंग टुमारो व्हाट इज द प्रायोरिटी व्हाट डू यू थिंक गाइस इंडियन पाकिस्तान बिकमिंग वन कंट्री वंस अगेन नेगेटिव ये सी का जीरो है व्हाई डू यू डोंट वांट इन इंडिया अफगानिस्तान सॉरी इंडिया अफगानिस्तान पाकिस्तान बांग्लादेश श्रीलंका नेपाल एंड ऑल ऑफ देम टुगेदर एज वन कंट्री अखंड भारत ट्रू नॉट ट्रू जीरो प्रॉब्लम नेगेटिव मींस दे हैव चलो एनीवे सो लॉट्स ऑफ जीरो एंड सिंगल डिजिट और वन प्रोबेबिलिटी ओके नाउ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री इवेंट यू नो लेट बोरिस जॉनसन पेइंग अटेंशन टू ओहो ओके भाई अब की बार नो मोदी सरकार अरे भाई नो नो पॉलिटिकल दिस थिंग आप मेरे को मतलब जेल भिजवाओगे डोंट डू दैट या सो यू विल यू हैव टू कम टू जेल गेटिंग सम गाजर का हलवा फॉर मी सेइंग ओके माय टीचर इज जेल लेट्स गो एंड मीट हिम देयर ऐसा मत करना दोस्त आई हैव स्टिल सम लाइफ ओके सो नो पॉलिटिकल इधर डिस्कशन ओके चलिए कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री इवेंट लेट ई बी एन इवेंट and not e be an event which occurs only when e doesn't occur so it is usually stated or denoted by this uh, e bar e bar is complement that something is happening and uh, you know um, uh, e bar is something not happening right so complement of an event right the event not e is called the complementary event of e so clearly pe plus p not e is one and this is only when um, okay anyways uh, but ha huh, so let's say if head was happening so p of h let's say event is head and uh, is equal to nothing but 1 minus p of tail right so hence p of probability of getting head plus probability of getting tail is equal to 1 because either of them will have to happen right so that's complementary this thing chalo batao sample paper lagao now enough of gyan in probability now this is the sample paper question there were only one i think only one mark two marks find the probability of getting a doublet in a throw of a pair of dice what is a doublet guys you know doublet so these definitions you must be knowing okay otherwise aap ek gadbad ho jayega doublet is if you get the same number so 1 1 in both of both of them so 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 5 5 6 6 and 7 7 7 right so when you get both of them together on both the faces yes 1 by 6 very easy so what is the probability of not getting a doublet bolo so this is total number of outcomes so let's say you have to write like this boss don't just write 1 by 6 over there so e is event of getting a doublet okay you might not write in a throw of pair of a dice so n cardinality number of outputs of e is how much 6 and uh, so hence total number of trials or total sorry total number of possible outcomes total possible outcomes in a roll of two die how many 36 okay so total is so n e upon 36 this is pe acha can you tell me if i change it to triplets What is the probability of getting a triplet in the role of three dice? Batao. What is the probability of getting triplets in the yeah one by thirty six? So can you generalize it? So let's say if I'm throwing n dice, n dice. So what is the possibility of getting n let? And let means just a double let, triple let, four let, five let, six let. So what is the probability of getting n let? If I'm throwing n dice, one by six to the power what? One by six to the power n minus one. Minus one is in the denominator or in the numerator? अच्छा so power में नहीं हाँ understood okay yeah good yeah very good so it is nothing but one upon this. Six to the power n minus one. That's what you are saying. All of you agree. This is the probability of getting an inlet if you throw n dice. True, false, guys. All of you agree or not? Agree to stress. Agree with stress. Yes. No. Agree. Sharduli is saying different thing. N by yeah. That same thing. Sharduli. N 
n divided by 6 to the power n is nothing but 1 upon 6 to the power n minus 1, isn't it? So n upon, uh, in this case, in this case, you'll get um, n, k, oh, nee, huh, sorry, you will not get uh, this thing. No, no, uh, is it okay, guys? So n, n, n let is how many, how many, how many possible outcomes of n let? So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, so 6 only, no, you'll get 6. In n let case also, you'll get only six possibilities. Yes or no? Six possibilities divided by six to the power n, not n divided by six to the power n. Shadul, you got it. So it's one upon six to the power n minus one. Next, find the probability of getting a black queen when a card is drawn at random from a well shuffled pack of 52 cards, black queen. black queen okay so let's play with this uh, card game okay black queen is 1 upon 26 why do you say that because if e is the event of getting a black queen event of getting a black queen right so what is n e how many black queens are there in the pack of cards? So one is of spade, another is of club, correct? Spade and club, yes or no? Spade queen and, uh, and club. A diamond and uh, hearts are red, right? So there are two. And total number of uh, possible, possible outcomes when you draw a card is 52, so two upon 52. 52, that is 1 upon 26. Very good. Now, tell me, what is the probability of getting a red queen? One by 26. What is the possibility of getting a queen? What is the possibility of get probability of getting a queen? 1 upon 13. Perfect. What is the probability of not getting a queen? Okay, very good. 12 upon 13. What is the probability of uh, what is the probability of getting a face card? Face card, you know, king, queen, jack. They are face cards, right? Yeah, very good. Huh. So 12 by 52 should be reduced to 3 upon 13. Very good. Okay. Now, what is the probability of getting a even number diamond card? So don't card the fa don't count the face cards in even or not. Five by fifty-two, even numbered diamond. Yes, very good. What is the probability that you don't get a diamond at all? No diamond. If you pick a card, no diamond. Should not be diamond. So stress thirty-nine by fifty-two is okay. Very good. Very good. So you are thorough with that. Okay. What is the probability? Uh, now, what is the probability that I draw two non-face cards? Oh, wait a minute. What is the probability that I draw two cards uh, with replacement? So listen carefully what I'm saying. With replacement, matlab, you are drawing one card and putting it back. Okay. So let's say you draw one card and uh, jot down the number. So let's say you draw five of clubs. So you write down the number five and then put this five back into the pack, shuffle it, draw one more. Okay. And this time you got seven, right? On the card seven, right? So what is the probability that, uh, no, it will be a tough question for you to follow. It will become more deadly. So question was this, what is the probability that the sum of the two cards number is 12? 
So you draw one card, get one number. Forget the face cards. Face cards are not included in numbering. So one to ten. Ace is included. Let's say. Or ace, yes, huh? But then it will be too difficult for you right now. Don't don't do that. It will take some time. Chalo, abhi easy rakhte hain. A die is thrown once. What is the probability of getting a number less than three? Ye to bada saan hai. One mark where it is. A die is thrown once. What is the probability of getting a number less than three? So less than three is one and two. So one. So hence. Outcomes e e ka outcome is so set of outcomes of e is one and two. So n cardinality of e number of such possible favorable outcomes is two, and uh, number of outcomes possible outcomes is six. So two upon six one upon three. Very good. Okay. Uh, what is the probability of getting Oh, one die is anyways very easy, so no problem. So let's go to the next one. A letter of English alphabet is chosen at random. What is the probability that chosen letter is a consonant? What is the probability that the chosen letter is a consonant? Twenty-one upon twenty-six. Very good. What is the probability that the chosen number is not a consonant? Five by twenty-six. Very good. What is the possibility that uh, what should I do? Yeah. Yeah. Now let us pick two letters. Okay. So will that will you be able to do that? Wait a minute. Mm. Okay. No. Uh, no. You will. Actually, let let me just see. Let me see if you can do this sum. It is little stressed. Up. It will not be asked in board exams, but then just to make fun, some bit of fun here. So let's say uh, you are designing a passcode. Okay, three-letter passcode. Okay, what is the possibility that starts with A? I don't know whether you will be. Have, all of you are well versed with PNC. Have you done counting? Before anyone did not do counting before PNC guys, hello. Otherwise, your grade ten probability is just like a monotonous repetition of same thing. Can you do that? I don't know if you are. It is too tough for you. Anyone? What is the probability that? No, no probability. I'm asking. Can letters be repeated? No. Letters can't be repeated. You have to get three letter passcode. it has start it has to start with a what is the probability that it starts with a 1.26 good says can you explain how so the total number of possibilities of passcodes are uh, 26 into 25 to 24 Because letters can't be repeated, and uh, the number of ways. So we are fixing A in the first, uh, in the first place, mm -hmm. and the other two places can be filled by twenty-five and twenty-four ways. So twenty-five into twenty-four by twenty-six into twenty-five into twenty-four. But this is a conventional. I was, I was, I thought the moment you said one by twenty-six, I was like, I jumped out of my seat because I was expecting some other quick answer. There's a quick one. I so I the way I did it is I just considered the first box. So the po uh, number of possible letters that can be in the first box is twenty six. Out of that, A is one option. So one by twenty six. Perfect. Perfect. So that's, that's what I did. Yes. Good. Right. So you do, you don't need to. Uh, yeah. One upon twenty six is uh, uh, good because any any letter. Shres, did you understand? So any letter you put there in the first box, um, you know. Uh, so A can be. Uh, you know in one of the 26 such cases because i'm not worried about what's happening to the next two boxes but your method was also that was conventional method how we do it but here also even if let's say i don't know anything i know that uh, there will be 26 possibilities here so 26 yeah aryan so that is the conventional method of doing it right you count and all that yeah so instead of that i'm saying let us say forget these two anyways Whether it is A, whether it is B, whether it is C, whether it is G, whether it is Z, whatever it is there in the first, all of them have same set of the other two. Yes or no? 
so that this part is common to all all the letters okay so hence even if it is not there i don't care so as arin single was mentioning so it is one upon so there will be so in the first box there will be let's say a is there in the first box and there are let's say n number of words out of them let's say now you put b you will get another set of n number of words out of them you put c in the first box and you will get another n likewise 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 you put z here you will get another n so all these are same in same in the sense count is same they are not same exactly in in the form but the count is same all of all these will be n only for any choice of a b c d whatever so hence a can be one of 26 so hence the probability is did you understand so you have to even even if you don't know counting let's say p and c it's okay chaliye so you could have thing you could have thought this way as well all all of you clear on this in this particular question this will not be asked definitely in boards don't worry but now we have to give you that flavor okay pnc is very important chapter in grade 11 very very important and it is involved in binomial theorem it is involved in uh, let's say complex number it is involved in trigonometry it is involved in um uh, probability so hence bahut zaruri very very important okay chaliye let's if the probability of winning of game is 0.07 what is the probability of losing it Point nine three one minus this you can do when they are mutually exclusive, isn't it? So someone who is winning cannot lose, right? So that that then is possible, but no problem, right? So hence let's say there is a poll going on. A poll is going on. This is let's say ah uh, ha. So if there is a probability of draw, then not happening. so hence there you can't write 0.93 right so let's say there is but then you have to also say what is the probability of draw is is draw equally likely for example in a test match winning losing or draw what is the probability that some team will win what is the prob theoretical probability that some teams let's say all are equally probable let's say again there will be a great discussion on how do we say that equally probable how can you say let's say let's let's take this example let's say test cricket can you say the loss and the win and the draw drawing the test are all equally probable yes or no how many of you say yes are in single says no 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 why on what basis do you say no so how will you decide what is the probability what will you decide intuition Mm, no, you have a better, better power. Are you better than in Qs? Skill of team? No, yar. Or be better. You have learned this. That's where the bridge is has to be, you know, parted. Now you, you please go back and remember what you have done in your life. Previous match results, perfect. Experiment. Yes. So you have historical data, right now. Historical data, and that's what becomes empirical probability. Historical data. So out of let's say thousand tests done. So far, four hundred ended up on the let's say you know uh, so four hundred were or uh, ha then you you will say that there were six uh, hundred cases where there was a result four hundred was no result that is draw okay now you will say what is the probability now can you say acha let me give you this data then with result five hundred and twenty without result. Out of thousand, that is four hundred and eighty. Now, can you say that winning, losing, and drawing all are equally probable? Yes, no. Bolo. Now, what I am saying is, winning, losing, or drawing are now are now equally probable. Our intendant says still says no. Okay, anyone else who says yes now, winning or losing is no. Our in single also says no. Okay, anyone else who says yes. no one says yes how can it be equally probable when 4 out 80 times 480 out of 1000 times it is a, it resulted in a draw so obviously for equally probable of win lose and draw what should be the ideal value 0.33 0.33 
zero point three three. Then you could have said all are equally probable. Yes or no? But what is the probability of draw here? Zero point four eight. So that means fifty percent chances approximately is there for a draw, and the other fifty percent, what happens there? It is different thing. Oh, again, uh, Aryan. See, the everything for that matter is dependent on external factors. Okay, so hence you know, hence we deal with probability. Hence we are talking uncertainties here. Hence we are measuring uncertainties, right? So hence, if if you toss a coin, wind blows. takes away the coin only okay that is also a factor external factor right but do you consider that if you toss the coin hard enough and it goes and strikes the roof so all those conditions are you know uh, right so hence here we are talking about you know how to uh, uh, so in such case obviously there will be certain you will you will not just say that okay you know this is a, this is a chance this is a, let's say if you have to bet Or let me let me rephrase this question. Let's say if you have to bet, someone is saying that uh, you know if the draw happens, then I will give you one lakh rupees. Now don't do this. This is illegal in India. So let's say you are betting on drawing. So what is your chances of winning? Forget about external factors. You winning the bet. What is the chance? You understand? You are betting on draw. That if the if the if the match is drawn, I win. I get some money. what is the probability of you winning it how will you calculate you will look at the previous data and see hey, uh, every other match is being drawn so there is a this is a calculation i am doing so hence I, my chances is 50 50% here almost not exactly 50 50% so there is always a possibility that it can go into a draw yes but obviously you have to also see let's say uh, 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 the recency is involved for example let's say india playing australia and, and australia is pathetically bad for the last 6 months then you know that the local probability here the recent recent recency is having some influence then you might influence your betting behavior as well so keeping that aside let's say everything is fine and then you know so hence you can historically you can say that this is the chance okay now tell me another example from cricket only in india versus pakistan world cup matches who wins who wins india india has a brilliant track record of not being beaten a single time by pakistan in a world cup match any world cup match okay now still don't you think people people are so confident that they stop watching only uh, or i think i know so many people start praying when india india pakistan match happens in especially in a world cup despite the fact that india has beaten pakistan in all games 100% probability right but still there is some you know uh in either india or pak but what aniket arin understand but india in past however many years didn't understand your 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 statement i did not understand i'm saying in the in the world cup india has beaten pakistan every, every yes so hence theoretically we have 100% probability of winning it but then that external factor keeps us you know nervous on that day anyways let's go to the next question what is the probability that a randomly ah this is a good question taken leap year has 52 sundays this is so can we say that theoretical probability is not applicable where the events are no 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 i am not saying that mumita i am saying theoretical probability is something where you don't need to perform for example in in x in in case of cricket you do not have any way of evaluating the theoretical probability of winning and losing you understand there is no formula given so let's say you can't do 2 to the power n here right you have to so another another example i'll tell you let's say um uh, and, and you would have done this uh, um so so arent and uh, just a minute let me finish with momita's this thing so let's say you uh, momita and all of you please pay attention to this let's say you are a uh, what um mm, 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 mm. ye yeah. kya bolta hai usko airbag manufacturing company airbag you know airbag that car ka safety airbag is there right in the steering wheel uh, there is an airbag right so uh momita is there yeah all of you are there understand do you understand what is an airbag all of you would have seen that god forbid you see that ever but you know that there is an airbag inside that steering wheel and when there is a 
deep, let's say, great impulse. Let's say, unfortunately, someone's vehicle rams into someone, some tree or something, and then that airbag will just get inflated and you will be saved, right? So because of that. So let's say you are an airbag manufacturing company. How do you calculate the probability of this airbag opening up when the real impact happens? How do you think the companies would be calculating all these values? Kaise karte honge? How do you know? Or let's say, uh, uh, have you seen asbestos sheet? Uh, temporarily they make asbestos sheet. So how do, how do we do quality testing of such thing? Yes. So that means you have to, you know, basis experiments, fake crash multiple times and exactly. Or fake, fake crash also has to be in the simulated environment. Yeah. So hence you have to do a lot of, so you could have argued, sir, why can't I just know the strength of the material, get the velocities and uh, uh, let's say all data there and then try to calculate through theory and, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if you have watched this. There's a funny, funny I, I would just like to show you this. Just spare some minute. It will be entertaining you also because you also are putting in so much of effort. I don't know if you have seen engineering way, engineers way of playing a basketball. Have you seen that? N N G engineers. Have you seen anyone? Any <laughs> engineers way of playing playing uh, basket playing basketball. Very funny. I want you to chalo entertainment karte hain thoda aapko. Uh, this one is. A, I don't know if I have the uh, is the audio shared just a minute. audio shared is it all is it i can't hear the audio okay share huh what is the probability of So poor guy. How many? Achha, before it starts, how many of you have seen this? Tell me. How many? How many of you have seen this? Okay, I can see stress. Aryan, Ralph, Janya. Okay, everyone has seen. Then I will not show it to you. So if if everyone has, you know. Uh, anyways, chalo, I'll just do a faster this thing and so that I will speed speed increase maybe. Where is that? Okay, so question, how many of you think he is going to put it in the basket? So he's he's taking an attempt. Do you think he's going to put it in the basket? Now he's converting a probabilistic model to a deterministic model.
Difference between theoretical probability. <laughs> Now you understood what is the difference between. Okay. So... Okay. So this is what was. Uh, what do you say? You engineer's way of doing. Huh? So yes, coming back to this question. What is the probability that a randomly taken leap year has 52? Seven days. So answer found out. Two by seven. Okay. 2 by 7, everyone. 2 by 7. What is the probability? Is there some Aryan Tendon was saying something. Some issue was there. Randomly taken leap year has 52 Sundays. So, how did you solve it? Randomly. How many days are there in? Uh, you know, any, any leap year. How many weeks are there? 52. Right? Is it complete 52 weeks and 2 extra days? Very good. So, hence you have 2 extra days. So, 52 Sundays are anyways there. So what is the probability that a random randomly taken leap year has 52 Sundays? 52 Sundays are there, no? What is the probability that 52 Sundays are there? Every leap year will have 52 Sundays. One, yes. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes or no? Are can any any leap year have oh, uh, no, no 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 sorry 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 no not at all sorry wrong 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 uh, thing no so they are say, they are say, yeah, yeah yeah correct so hence how what is the probability that 53 is not there so hence you have to check correct Prishim. good sorry it was not only 52 sundays so definitely there but then it can have so they have uh, mentioned uh, 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 little vaguely because 52 Sundays are anyways there. Okay. So yes, question is, so hence one, one is the answer for this because 52 Sundays are anyways there. But I think the, the question is this, that only 52 Sundays. Chalo, let me change it to, so they should have framed it like this. What is the probability that only right abhi nikalo so only 52 sundays are there what is the probability that uh bolo in color green hmm. otherwise manlo let's say if there is a question like this what is the probability that a randomly taken leap year has 52 sundays what would you infer so friends, my recommendation would be if you get any vague, let's say if you are, if you're considering, uh, you know, if you're assuming that there is some kind of ambiguity in the question, you can write your assumption and, you know, very well assert that, that, you know, if you, it is talking about 52 Sundays that it has 52 Sundays, uh, no, no, uh, no sense wise has 52 Sundays means only this, only 52 Sundays. Okay, so that it doesn't mean doesn't mean 53 Sundays. If it has said at least 52 Sundays, then one. Yeah, someone was mentioning that, right? Yes, at least 52 Sundays. Then to one, there is no possibility of having 51 Sundays in any leap year. So it could be 52 and 53 both. So only 52 Sundays. That means the leap year. Huh, so five by seven, isn't it? The two extra days which are there should not be Sunday. 
okay so it can be so hence the two two extra days should not be saturday saturday sunday or sunday monday in this order right others are possible right so hence uh, all other or there will be five more here what all monday tuesday tuesday wednesday wednesday thursday thursday friday and friday saturday so these are the total combinations these are ruled out this should not be there so five out of seven leap years will be like that good so hence my recommendation would be you, if you are as you or let's say you know uh, thinking that there is some kind of ambiguity you can do that next if a number x is chosen at random from the numbers this then find the probability of x square less than 4 x square less than 4 Hmm. Answer is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3 by 7. Perfect. Yep. Only this candidate, this candidate, and this candidate. Their square is 1, 0, 1. Sky square is 4. Sky square is 9. Sky square is 4 again. Sky square is 9. So these are ruled out, ruled out, ruled out ruled out why it is great just check the sign it is less than four has that been less than equal to four be very very careful then probability would be different right so in this case one two three out of seven so three upon seven very good next ah very easy these are all board papers yeah very easy paper probability you should get 100 percent marks a die is thrown once, what is the probability of getting a prime number? Okay. Achha, let me change this. A die is thrown twice. One is very easy. If you throw once, it is 1 by 2. Why? Because you'll get 2, 3 and 5 out of total 6. So 3 upon 6. No problem, right? Now I'm saying, throw the dice twice. What is the probability that the sum is prime number now? Chalo, this could be a question again. You are throwing a dice twice. What is the probability that the sum is p rhyme number? p rhyme. Seven by thirty-six. How? Rn. How many such cases? Did you count the cases? So highest number of prime number as a sum would be in second case also one by two. Prishim, this is first answer. Second answer. First answer is half. What about the second answer? Second one. You throw it twice. Sum is prime. How many such are in tendency is one? Seven by 36. Sorry. Others, please try. So you are throwing the dice twice or die twice and you are noting down the sum. So what all possibilities or how many prime numbers are there either you can do the manual work of adding all so let's say one 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 two and all that so it will go from two three four five six seven if first is one then if first is two you can get two plus one three five and then two plus three two plus four six seven eight you can keep counting like that and now it is three so only till five yes yeah, so you have to add all right instead of that you should make a table i would have made a table count right 
right? So if you have to count only, otherwise I will tell you another method maybe that is also there. Okay. So let's say I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. And then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then three, four, uh, four, uh, right. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then four, five, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. Then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And this is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How many are prime numbers? Card one, two, three, four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14. I got 14. I'm getting 15. 15. Did I miss something? 7. Ah, yes. 15. Okay. Thanks a lot. So 50. Good. 36. Is there any other way out without counting? Because if I do a three, three dice throw, then I can't make tables. That will be too hectic job. There is another way. Do you think there is another way of finding out the prime numbers? Yes or no? So there are another, uh, you know, other ways are like that. So like this, what are prime numbers do you know? Two, right? But two can happen only in one combination. One comma one. Let's say three. This is one comma two, two comma one, right? Let's say five. One, four, not two, not two, three, and then three, two. That's it. Then seven. Is ka one six to nahi chalega, two five, five two, three four nahi chalega. Then eleven. Two three five seven eleven. Eleven ka kya hoga? Four one. Ha cha ha. The individual should also be prime number. Ha ha. Correct correct correct. Yes. Then ha. This is also true. One four four one. That's what I was not counting. I was thinking that four is also not a prime number. Yes correct. Yahan pe bhi bahut saare hoteinge three four. Four three, anything else possible? One six also. So one six six one. This is another way of doing it. And eleven kabi yeh sahi. One ten to hoga nahi. Two ni hoga three four five four six nahi. Five five six six five. That's it. Okay now like that. Now count how many? One two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen. Like that. This is also. Yeah, so hence I don't need to sum all and then check rather than I take prime numbers and then find the combinations and then do it. Okay. Yes. Now, if you have tried this for, let's say three, if you, if you roll out three dice, then you have to now come into Diophantine equation solving and all that. Right. So basically finding out integer solution to sum of three numbers, adding up to a prime number. Let's say if you roll out three, let's say, let me give you a question. This like this. If you roll out, roll three dice, what is the maximum possible prime number you'll get? Sum all. Maximum possible prime number is when you roll three dice. Bolo. 17. But in this case, now you have to solve this equation. What equation? X plus Y plus Z is equal to 17. This is what you're going to learn in next level. So X plus Y plus Z, team integers are there, positive integers or three natural numbers, X, Y, Z is adding up to 17. How many solutions are there? Again, P and C come into picture. Okay. So using permutation and combination, you can find out, right? So it's like, let's say there are, there are 17, you know, uh, sticks, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are 10 sticks. Then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 sticks are there. So basically you have to divide these 17 sticks into three, three groups. So how do you do, do that? So you are, let's say you're putting a larger a, a, a card or a 
uh, cardboard between the group of sticks. So let's say if I put here one cardboard and here one cardboard, then I get X, this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. So I'm just clustering them. So how many ways can you put these two sticks, these two cardboards, these one, out of how many empty spaces are there? There are 18 empty spaces, isn't it? So empty space is here, two, three, four, five, six, like that, till here. There are 18 empty spaces. So basically the question is reduced to how many ways can you pick two empty spaces out of 18 empty spaces? What is the answer? Those who have studied combination, they know it. How to, how to pick two out of 18? What is the formula? You have to, how to pick eight, two out of 18, 18 C2, right now. So you know, those many solutions are there for the first equation. Isn't it? So these many, com these many, so you can put anywhere. So for example, let's say you put the cardboard here and here, you'll again get three solutions like that, uh, X, Y, Z, three values. So you don't, we don't know, we don't need the values per se. We know that we know, or we want the number of values. So you can use permutation combination there. So this is the next step of probability next. So right now in grade 10, you're throwing two dice in grade 11, you'll be throwing maybe three dice. And then you will require the art of counting, which is, which we discussed in our classes, PNC to find out the, so this is just one case. There has to be next case. Let's say, for example, adding up to 13, then to 11 and all that. Yes, Sarduli, what are you saying? Bolo. So anyways, I, I just got, I gave you some idea around it. This one. The probability of that it will rain tomorrow is 0.85. What is the probability that it will not rain tomorrow? 0.15. No brainer here. So let's move ahead. I hope this is clear to everyone, right? Now this is again on the leap year question. Find the probability that a leap year selected at random will contain 53 Sundays and 53 Mondays. Now, do you know, it's like a previous question remodeled. 53 Sundays and 53 Mondays, one upon seven, perfect, because these, these has to be, so the extra two days, you know, no, leap year, it's a leap year dude, leap year, so extra two days will be there, right, so extra two days, you can have Sunday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, likewise, all that, so you need Sunday, Monday, only one case is there, out of seven cases, so you can see Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. So out of this, only one. So one upon seven. Next. This was one marker last year. Last two, uh, last year. Now please be very, very careful while you're doing this. See. Three red, five, seven white ball is drawn from the bag at random. Probability that the ball drawn is not black. Two by three. Okay. They are very smart, no? Someone, if if they if you don't put attention, don't pay attention to this, then there were options are one by three, two by three, or also there. Okay, both options are there. So if you don't look at it, so, right? So bag contains three red, five, seven white. What ball is drawn from the back at random, the probability that ball drawn is not black. That means though two ways of doing it. Either you draw red slash white, anything, right? So probability of drawing red slash white, red or white, that is, is nothing but three plus seven upon 15. Three plus five plus seven. So this is two by three or you find out probability of drawing black, which is five by 15, which is one by three. So P of not black, two by three. both ways you can do this one. Sum type. What is the probability that the sum of two numbers appearing on the top is 13? <laughs> what is the probability if I take you what is the probability of probability that the sum of two numbers appearing on this on the top is 11 
Ja, ja, Adrian, das ist Glück für Sie. Ja. Done this case. This this is done. Eleven. Two dice are thrown, and uh, what is the probability that the sum of the two numbers appearing on the top is eleven? One upon eighteen. Yep. So it is five six or six five. Ejent it. Ejent it. Hmm. hmm. अच्छा इन द प्रीवियस केस व्हेन वी वर डीलिंग विद दिस देखो ये वाले में देयर इज अ कंस्ट्रेंट आल्सो ऑन दिस गाइस सो दिस वाज जस्ट एन आईडिया इट इज नॉट इट इज नॉट कंप्लीट द आईडिया वाज दैट x इज लेस देन इक्वल टू 6 y इज आल्सो लेस देन इक्वल टू 6 एंड z इज आल्सो लेस देन इक्वल टू 6 दिस इज अ कंस्ट्रेंट इज इट x y z आर डेफिनेटली पॉजिटिव बट दे आर लेस देन इक्वल टू 6 आल्सो सो हेंस हियर सम बिट ऑफ लिमिटेशंस आर आल्सो देयर ओके सो यू कांट रियली हैव One, one, and fifteen. So we have to rule out. So there is again that 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 question is still one more step left there. So hence, don't think that it is eighteen C two only. You have to go much much more one step there more there. You have to eliminate few of the results from them from that. Anyways, we will cross the bridge when it comes. Right now, this is yeah. So Aryan has posted a query. Let me just take it. Let me just finish with this. Probability of an event that is sure to happen is fill in the blanks. very 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 simple and not worthy enough to be so let me not say that probability of an event that is sure to happen is 1 that is not sure to happen no surety 0 die is thrown once find the probability of getting a number which is a prime number we did this half lies between 2 and 6 the number point number 2 lies between 2 and 6 how much What is the second probability? Yep. Okay, so this is done. Four. So two ke baad, uh, three and four are the possibilities. So this is three and four. So what are the possibility in case two? Events are this three and four. And five, so hence n e is equal to three. So this is will be three upon six is half. Okay, this is the answer. Okay, next one. Probability of selecting a blue marble at random from a jar that contains only blue, black, and green marbles is one upon five. Probability of selecting a black marble at random from the same jar is one upon four. If the jar contains eleven green marbles, find the total number of marbles in the jar. No, oh, sorry. Oh. Done. Is this done? Probability of selecting a blue marble at random from a jar that contains only blue, black, and green marbles is one upon five. So, probability of blue then black. probably of green
correct so if probability of getting black is 1 upon 5 of sorry blue is 1 upon 5 no 1 upon 4 sorry this is 1 upon 4 oh then it is not correct so this is 1 upon 4 black getting black is 1 upon 4 so probability of getting green will be 1 minus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 4 right and then 11 green marbles are there so hence what is this nothing but 11 upon total number of marbles n isn't it so hence simple calculation now 20 right so this is 20 minus 4 minus 5 so this means 11 by 20 is equal to 11 by n n is 20 okay can you tell me how many blue blue marbles are there blue marbles how many how many blue marbles are there yeah blue four how do i know so let's say blue blue is b b by 20 will be 1 upon 5 and black is bl so bl by 20 is 1 upon 4 so black is 5 and uh, blue is 4 ha uh, ulta bol diya maine so black is 5 no are in yes or no blue is 1 by 5 yeah 4 and 5 ulta right so blue is 4 okay chalo good a bag contains 15 balls out of which some are white and others are black probability of drawing a black ball at random from the bag is 2 by 3 find how many white balls are there in the bag five very good It, these are very very easy questions again bag contains 15 balls out of which some are white and others are black is the probability of drawing a black so pb is 2 by 3 so since there are only two types of uh, balls so 2p w will be 1 upon 3 1 minus 2 by 3 hmm right now let us say total number of black balls or total number of what uh, how many white balls are there in the bag so total number of bag is uh, sorry ball no what ha 15 total number of balls in the bag is 15 so number of white ball let us say w is equal to what now w upon 15 is the probability of picking a white ball is equal to 1 upon 3 so w is 5 5 white balls clear to everyone any anybody has any difficulty so far any difficulty so far please tell me so oh, a child has a die which which whose six faces show the letters given below the die is thrown once what is the probability of getting a now if you see this is not theoretical probability this is on the basis of experiment right What is the probability of getting A? Ah, uh, yeah. Or without experiment, also you can figure out. So hence, yes, to an extent, theoretical. Yes, theoretical only because you're not doing performing any. So what you're doing is you're just fi finding the right outcome divided by total number of outcomes possible. So no experiments, but then you have special type of die which you have created. So theoretical only in this case. Okay, and B. What is B? B is one by three. got it very good next cards marked with numbers hey i'm just going through all the questions in a bit faster manner so hence if you any one of you are not understanding please let me know even after the class you didn't understand any question stop stay back we will deal with that next card marked with cards marked with number 5 to 
one number on one card are placed in a box and mixed thoroughly one card is drawn at random from the box find the probability that the number on the card taken out is a prime less than 10 card are marked with number 5 to 50 how many are total cards it cannot be 45 46 yes please be very very careful total number of cards are 46 total number is 46 not 45 hmm first one is 1 upon 28 Karin Tandon is saying one upon forty-six. There are two prime numbers less than ten, five and seven. Right. So in this case, first first case, E set will be having five and seven, less than ten. Right. And there are how many? Uh, number of cards is forty-six. Right. Number total number of cards is forty six, so hence P E is two upon forty six. That is one upon twenty three. Yep, one upon twenty three is correct. Are intended one upon twenty eight? Ah, two upon forty six. Ah, then a uh, number which is a perfect square. Perfect square less than equal to fifty. Are what nine, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, forty-nine. Yeah, five upon forty-six. Very good, easy. So, PE in this case. Hmm. A die is thrown once. Find the probability of getting a composite number. One answer is. One answer is. First is one by two. Prime number is a prime number is one by two. Ha, prime number is also no. First is one by three. Hey, how come one by two? One is not a prime or composite. So composite numbers are only four and six. So hence it will be two upon six. And prime number there are three, three by six. What all? Two, five, and three. And this one composite numbers are only four and six. One is neither prime nor composite, so one by three, one by two, right? Right answer. Everyone is comfortable. One by three, one by two, no problem. One do not count one as composite or prime. Find the probability of drawing a card which is neither a spade nor a king. Neither a spade nor a king. So count the number of spade, count the number of kings, but they are not mutually exclusive, my friends. So you have to be careful. So there are thirteen spade, spade, and three more kings, because one king is. As king of spade only, so total number of such cards are sixteen. So sixteen cards must not be there, right? So that means the required probability is so. 
what is the probability that you draw a spade or a king is 16 by 52 so what is the required probability p of e will be simply 52 minus 16 upon 52 am i right bolo 36 upon 52 which is 9 upon 23 sorry 9 upon 13 Hmm. Clear? 9 upon 13. Oh, this is done. Fair enough. So we come to the last slide wherein this is how, see, how people have responded to the probability question. So event they have mentioned, this particular person has mentioned dice is thrown, outcomes are 1, 2, 3. So you write possible outcomes, favorable event, composite number 4 and 6. Priority of getting a composite number, number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes. The formula has been given. So 2 by 6 is equal to 1 by 3. Always reduce to simplest form. Reduce the fraction to simplest form. Okay. Then prime number ka case mein, 2, 3, 5 probability is number of outcomes favorable to the event divided by total possible outcomes, which is number of prime numbers divided by total of outcomes, total outcomes, 3 upon 6 is half. Okay. Then this one is another question in this, you know, so numbered 7 to 40 are chosen. Total possible outcomes, 7, 8, 9, C is 34. So you be careful here. Number of cards counting. Favorable event is 7. Favorable outcome, five cards. So hence like that, you, you know, so write each and everything elaborately. So probability of selecting a card multiple of seven. So don't write just PE and all that. If you are writing, then you have to write mention here. Let E be the event of, you can write like that. Let E be the event of whatever. Then you can write PE directly. No problem is equal to this by this X by Y, whatever. Is it okay? But try to give all the details of whatever you are assuming and on those three to four marks which are scheduled or which are there, which are there. Now there's a question from Aryan. So let me take that question and uh, solve. Okay, so here is the question. Let me go to go to go to Microsoft. So this is something like this. Aryan, this is the question, correct? There are 60 students. 60 students in a class among which 30 are boys. Okay. In another class, there are 50 students among which 25 of them are boys. Very good. If one from each class is selected, what is the probability of both being girls? Okay. So total kitna okay. A case, case A. How many girls and boys? So we have B is equal to 30 plus 25. And girls in both sections put together 30 plus 25, isn't it? 50, 50 percent. 60 students in the class among which 30 are boys. Okay. So 30 will be girls. In other class, there are 50 students among which 25 of them are boys. So other 25 are girls. If one from each class is selected, what is the probability of both being girls? Both being girls is 55. Four. Two are selected. Yeah. What is the probability of both? Uh, Achha, one is selected from the first one. Okay, one girl. What is the probability of half into half is the answer. 1 by 25. Isn't it? 1 by one by 4, sorry. 1 by 4. Why? Because probability of selecting a girl from the first class is 1 upon 2. One selected, probability of selecting girl from the second one is also 1 by 2. So hence the total probability will be half into half. Is that understood? Dost, hello. Can I? Uh, Aryan, got it or not? Uh, what is the probability of having at least one girl? At least one girl. So at least one girl, matlab, two girls, one girl from the first section and or one girl from the second section. So case one, case two, case three correct or you find out the total probability of both boys together so both boys are there how what is the probability that both of the boys are there one by four again so what is the probability that at least one girl is there three by four got it so probability that probability of both boys 
both are boils how much is this 1 by 4 again same probability 30 by uh, sorry uh, 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 so probability that both are not boils yahi chahiye na aapko both are not boils this is what is at least one girl is 3 by 4 am i right bolo or you can do it from here also two girls both are girls so 1 by 4 probability only one girl from the first section so that is a uh, half of you know half is the probability of selecting one girl uh from the first section and one is the probability of uh what selecting a boy from the other section let's say that that's the case of one one girl and uh no wait a minute 1 by 2 1 by 2 sorry ha huh. 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 again so this is the probability of one girl and one boy and this one again 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 so total is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 this plus this plus this so 3 by 4 arin did you get it both questions arin yes no confirm hello not confirming yeah once again dekho what is the what are three two ways of doing it one is at least one girl is not both boys right these are same condition no at least one girl mean not both boys both boys should not be there correct so both boys ka probability is what so probability that both are boys is nothing but again 1 by 2 from the first 1 by 2 from the second so 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 1 by 4 1 by 4 is the probability of both boys are there so hence probability that both boys are not there as in both of them are not boys is nothing but 1 minus 1 by 4 3 by 4 clear this part is this part is clear the second part is case by case let's say both girls are there so both girls ka probability is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 one girl and one boy one girl from the first section probability is half one boy from the second section probability is half then this one 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 boy from the first section probability is half one girl from the second section probability is half so total probability is 1 by 4 plus this probability 1 by 4 plus this probability 1 by 4 why am i adding because these are mutually exclusive if this happens that is both girls are being selected then one girl one boy is out of question right so and both are mutually independent isn't it so this doesn't impact this this doesn't impact this hence add all of them okay so total probability is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 is 3 by 4 is that understood now both yeah fair enough so thanks for your time guys we'll close the show here we'll meet again day after tomorrow we are going to start triangles now the only most crucial chapter left then there is circles i think circles we did uh, construction is there and then we have to do the real numbers for the regular batch and matrices and rational expressions for the rnr batch okay so we are maintaining a good pace we will be thorough by feb first week okay fair enough thanks a lot for your time bye bye take care have a nice evening to all of you bye 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 take care guys enjoy go take a walk go for cycling skipping whatever do some physical exercise enjoy